see here, portion sizes were much smaller back then. You can see the dining room tables were smaller, the china was smaller. Uh, people sat and ate as a family back in early days, whereas today everyone's kind of rushing around. Uh, families seldom eat together anymore. As you can see here, there's uh, six chairs here. And everything was much smaller, as you can see plates. People eat from China. They weren't eating out of a paper bag as we do now in fast food places. They actually set the table with a tablecloth. Um, they had paintings of fruit on the wall. So things have changed quite a bit. Here I'll be right by George. As you can see back in uh, early days, before we had the obesity crisis, people would enjoy things like farmer's markets. They would be on every corner practically. This is the uh, Main Street Emporium where they specialize in books about vegetables and uh, jarring. As you can see dill pickles. Back in the early days they were uh, putting everything in a jar. Things like asparagus, garlic. Their pantries would be full of these kinds of things. Everyone would be growing their own vegetables and there would be very little obesity as a result. Just some more tips about fighting obesity here on Eat Right by George. The woman even had beautiful aprons with fruits and vegetables on them. On today's show, I wanted to discuss the comparison between how people ate in the early days, how they got their healthy foods, and why they were so thin compared to today's people. And as you can look in the background here, uh, this house back in the early days uh, had chickens. They had chicken wire, and the chickens would give them eggs. And also, of course, the chickens eventually would give them food as well. That would be their dinner eventually. But the chickens here, you can see that they had water for them. They had a lot of space for the chickens to run. Instead of having them in just a little cage, the chickens had space, they were happy, uh, they could uh, run in the yard, they can uh, get their food a lot easier, and they gave uh, much better food. Another great thing about people back in the early days is they grew their own food, and I'll show you later uh, some of the farms here, some of the gardens, uh, like the one here to the right here, they're growing corn. So back in those days, people, uh, they had their own gardens, they had their own farm animals. Uh, it was a much different life than now, and as a result, they were much thinner. I'll show you some more comparisons on you right by George, so stick around. Here's some more examples of how people in the early days grew their own food. As you can see here in the background, uh, there's a house, there's a house and there's a beautiful landscape. And they actually grew their food in the front yard. They have their garden in the front yard actually. As you can see here, they're growing corn, cucumbers, uh, peppers. There's uh, some other eggplant uh, varieties. So back then they didn't have the big restaurant chains or the big fruit markets like we do now. They had to grow their own fruits, which was not easy. But I bet you that those fruits tasted so good. Now here's another view of the uh, gardens back in those days. You can see the lettuce here. Looks like possibly some broccoli being grown next to the lettuce. 
tomatoes. Corn. Eggplant. The cucumbers near the end there. And some zucchini. You can see the front of the house. As I said before, a lot of times people will just make a garden right in the front of your lawn there. Welcome to E Rabbi George. Class is in session. Well, back in the early days, this is what a typical classroom probably looked like. Very small, confined, only a few windows, uh, a lot of wood chairs, not very comfortable. But I'm sure they had to learn a lot about nutrition back then as well. Uh, learning about the different types of vitamins, different types of plants, and how the plants grew. Uh, because kids, you know, they had to learn about farming, they had to learn about gardening. So they probably had to go to school for that as well. So this is what a typical classroom probably looked like back in the early days where the teachers uh, taught kids about nutrition and eating right. And that's one reason why the kids back then had very little obesity and very little type two diabetes like they do now. See, now we have big schools and the kids are heavier, and the kids have diseases they shouldn't develop until much later in life. No. So what does that tell you? You have a long way to go. One of the other great things that uh, people back in the early days would do is grow their own herbs. And as you can see here, here's one example of some beautiful basil. Look at the beautiful basil. Look at the leaves on here. This can be used in so many different types of sauces, like tomato sauces and pestos, uh, as a decoration, like a garnish on a plate. And it's so aromatic. If only you can smell how beautiful this basil smells. And if you look around behind me as well, look at this beautiful garden. People back in the early days, and now many of course, uh, they grew their own flowers. They would really concentrate hard on working in the garden. And that was uh, a great form of exercise as well. Another reason why they were so thin, they exercised a lot in their garden. As you can see some corn in the background once again. One of the more uh, prevalent types of foods that they grew then and they didn't have a lot of pesticides so they would have uh, marigolds in the garden to help repel a lot of uh, insects so the marigolds would be like a natural type of pesticide versus the type of pesticides that we use today and that in the result was a much cleaner environment as well just beautiful. Here on Eat Right by George. typical dining room for the uh, people in the early years. They also had uh, 
dinnerware like ours. However, it was much smaller. As you can see here, the plate's much smaller compared to today's plates. Therefore, they had smaller portions. They had a small bowl, glass, small glass, something for their appetizers, coffee. And the great thing is the presentation, look how beautifully everything was set. Plates were just put on the table uh, with silverware, plasticware. They had actual silverware. They set the table, the knife to the right, spoons to the right, forks to the left. A lot of care was taken so that people can actually enjoy their meal instead of trying to rush through it. Uh, the presentation was a big part of their meals and they would probably have dinner like this uh, a few times a week instead of just once a year. As you can see now in our present day society, we probably get together with the whole family to sit down like this maybe two, three times a year, maybe just for the big holidays and that's it. Whereas they were eating together like this all the time. It was like a more uh, daily occurrence. And when you eat right, uh, eat with your family, there are studies that show that people that eat with their families, they're uh, thinner because they're eating right. They're eating foods that are cooked at home, home-cooked meals, versus foods and meals that are cooked out and eaten out of a bag most of the time. So that's right, more information for you about eating right back in the early days here on Eat Right by George. Time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the footage from Henry Ford and uh, behind me you might see some teenagers eating poorly. They're eating some banana splits which probably have at least a thousand calories. And that's the problem with today's society, uh, childhood obesity. Um, it's a problem because children today are developing things like type 2 diabetes, something that they shouldn't develop until they're like in their 40s and it's one of the reasons because they're eating foods that are high in sugar, uh, high in carbohydrates and then the nutritional value is very low. So Sunday, the like one we're eating here, this is anywhere from 800 to 1000 calories and this is a fruit Sunday, so it's not quite as bad and this is uh, actually a smaller one. This is a small, this is anywhere from 800 to 1,000 calories, and it's probably about close to uh, 43 grams of fat, as I researched it. Of course, the people at the Sunday, they didn't even know, the people making the Sundays didn't really even know how many calories. Compared to what we should be eating, like they probably ate back in the day, a small which would only be about 100 calories. So I'm not saying not to have your dessert, but to be uh, eating it more sparingly and keeping away from foods with high calories. You could probably see the comparison here. They're melting because it's summertime. But this would be the better choice. And then this, of course, would be something you would just share. This is something you should just share.